Welcome to Information Service Engineering. This is lecture number four, Natural Language Processing, part three. This is the notebook for lecture number four. So in lecture number four, we have already introduced the concept of document corpora. And in this notebook, you will learn how to access and how to work with a corpus with the help of the Python NLTK library. Okay. We know already that a corpus is a computer-readable collection of text or speech, and NLTK, so the Natural Language Toolkit in Python, provides several corpora you could work with. And we have chosen the Gutenberg corpus, which contains lots of text from Project Gutenberg. Simply follow the link, then you find out a bit more about it. And um, we especially want to have a look at Shakespeare and at a specific Shakespeare play, which is here in that corpus. So first of all, what we have to do is we have to load or import uh, NLTK and we have to download the Gutenberg corpus. So let's have a look and, you know, we see what's the outcome. And we have here um, a look of the file ideas of texts, which are here in the Gutenberg corpus. And you see here that we have a few Shakespeare pieces. We have Shakespeare, Julius Caesar, we have Hamlet, we have Macbeth. And in the following, what we want to do here, we want to take a sample text out of the corpus, which is Shakespeare's Julius Caesar. Okay, let's start with a very simple task. So from here, we um, import here Gutenberg corpus and what we want to do is, of course, we want to count the words that are here contained in Shakespeare Caesar. So we create a list of the words from the text. And um, then what we do is simply, if we have the list, we print out the first 20. And furthermore, we simply look how long is here the list. So let's do this. And you see here, it starts with the tragedy of Julius Caesar by William Shakespeare, 1599, Actus Primus, blah, blah, blah. And we see then how many of these items are in the list. It's 25,833. So we have 25,833 tokens within. If you want to find out what's the vocabulary size, then simply we eliminate all the duplicates simply by yeah, creating a set out of this list. So this is a nice thing in Python. So we simply look at the vocabulary, create a set of the Caesar list, and then we see, okay, by eliminating the duplicates, we see that there are 3,560 words contained in there. So what linguists often do now is they want to see the concordance for a specific word. What's that? In corpus linguistic, a simple concordance is a list of examples of words as they occur in the corpus presented in a way so that the linguist can read them in the context in which they occur in the text. And since this is a tragedy of Julius Caesar, which, spoiler, ends with the death of Caesar, we want to see where does the word kill occur in this tragedy. So we do here simply the following. Again, we look at the text of Caesar that we have here and we look for the concordance of kill. And you see here then in the result where does kill occur. So for example, and kill him in the shell or let's kill him boldly and so on. So this is quite funny. So try it out with other kind of words like death, love, or try out the names of the people or the persons you know who act in Julius Caesar. Another nice thing, we can look for semantically similar words, which means um, words that occur in a similar context in this corpus. And for this, you look for uh, Caesar similar for the word kill, and you get then a list of more or less semantically similar words, which means words that are used in the same or co-occurring with the same words like kill. And this would be deny, bad, do, see, keep, after, turn, and so on and so on. Okay, let's see a, a dispersion plot. This is the next thing you will learn, um, which shows you where in the play specific words might occur. And we do this, so there is a method called dispersion plot. And then you can give here a list of words where you want to see how often and how frequently do they occur. And we start again with our kill example. And we know a few persons in 
the tragedy of Julius Caesar. So there is Caesar, of course, and then his nephew or son Brutus. And then there is Antony, his friend and rival. There's the Senate, of course, and there are the people of Rome. And in the end, he's dead. So let's see how aware these words are occurring here in the dispersion plot. And you see it here. Okay, so here the killing is in the planning and in the end they probably want to kill them. Caesar is the main character, so therefore he occurs rather frequently. And remember, it's a play, a drama. So this usually, if some of the persons say something, then of course the drama states the name of the person. So these are, again, uh, parts where Julius Caesar most frequently is speaking. So as you see here also Brutus. Brutus is more frequently and of course more than the, in the later part of the of the tragedy speaking. You see also Antony uh, in the later part he's saying not much. The Senate uh, only at one point here. The people uh, rather infrequently so they don't look at the people they only look at the arist aristocrats here and yeah of course the word dead comes more frequently also in the end than in the beginning. So this is quite interesting for a play. You might try this out for other kind of roles. Interesting in a corpus is also, of course, the frequency distribution of words. So let's see what are the 50 most frequently used words there. So how do we do that? Again, we do now a frequency distribution plot of Caesar. And first, of course, we create or we print out the 50 most frequent words here in uh, a list and you see what you see here ah okay i didn't take care of the punctuation and stuff like that so what i have to do is a bit of pre-processing so we do some pre-processing like for example we remove the punctuation and if i look here at the words probably i will also change everything to lowercase as you see here so i do this here simply i do the filtering and then i again print the 50 uh, most frequent words and you see ah okay most frequently and conjunction of course or the the determiner i to you of so these are the more fre most frequent words there and we can of course also plot this then so we plot here the first 50 of the frequency distribution and you see here then that we have here the counts first one up to 600 and you see here on the x-axis what are the um, according words but these are only the first 50 and you see here yeah this is a specific kind of distribution actually these kind of distributions are often called so long tail distributions or zipf distributions why because they are following a law given by a famous guy named zipf so this is zipf's law and zipf's law states that if you have given some corpus of natural language utterances, the frequency of any word is inversely proportional to its rank in the frequency table. So therefore you have this kind of exponential decay here. Thus the most frequent word will occur approximately twice as often as the second most frequent word, three times as often as the third most frequent word and so on and so on. So this is Zipf's law. So if you look at it, so you can write it down like that. So here, um, so uh, that the frequency here is uh, the inverse of, of the rank that you see here. And um, we might try to show exactly this kind of law also in our corpus. We simply have to look at, you know, yeah, let's have a look at all, not the 51st, but all of them. And I have put them here now in a dictionary to make the manipulation a bit easier so that uh, you see what you can do there. So this means I create a Python dictionary and I copy then simply the frequency distribution in that dictionary. So let's have a look how that looks then. Then I have here in the dictionary always combined the word plus and then that's the frequency of the word. A word. According to, you know, this is um, how they are ordered here. So now I want to plot the word frequency distribution like before. So I do it simply here with mat plotlib you see here and then I do a scatter plot as you see here and in the scatter plot you see you have single points for exactly each single word. However you see then here we have now all words. You remember the vocabulary was a bit more than 3000 words. Um, what we see here is really this kind of exponential 
decay this kind of frequency distribution. But to see whether this is true, what you often do then, um, you are trying to uh, use instead of the, let's say, uh, regular numbers on the axis, you are um, plotting the logarithm, which means of the rank order and the logarithm of the frequency on the two axes. So this is then a log log plot, which is often used in engineering. And then the funny thing with these log log plots is that so-called monomials, which are um, polynomials, which uh, are of the form y equals a times x to the power of some k, they appear as straight lines. Depending on the k, of course, then uh, the inclination of um, the, the, uh, the straight line then is given. So we do this simply then here in the next one. So what we do here, we do again a scatter plot. And here uh, we simply take instead of, you know, plotting the value, we plot here the logarithm of the value for the x and for the y axis. And you see, yeah, it has changed a bit. It looks a bit like, a, not really like a straight line, but you can see a straight line. So we can demonstrate this then simply by adding another plot in this plot of a straight line, which would reflect one divided by x, which would be a truly exponential function according to Zipf's law. And we put this also again with a logarithm on both axes to the plot. And you see here, yeah, already in Julius Caesar, although it's only a few thousand words, um, you see this is already approximating something like a straight line. You might try this out by, you know, not taking only Julius Caesar here, but probably the entire Gutenberg corpus and this then see whether if you take more words in there, um, the frequency distribution probably gets closer to the ideal line here of Zipf's law. Simply try it out, play around a bit, a little bit. Okay, that's it so much. I hope you have enjoyed lecture number four and we will continue with natural language processing Again, corpus linguistics then in the next part of the lecture.